All right guys, so uh, here I'm gonna show you how to uh, adjust the waste gates. These turbos that client bought used, there's always risk involved when buying used turbos or KO4s. You don't know how many miles there are on them, how they've been used or abused. You take a, a huge risk at, at using used turbos, but you know you do get them for a good price, so you have to weigh that in. Uh, I'll go through and check everything over, make sure everything looks okay. You know, Give it the good old spinny test. Doesn't really tell you much, but people like to give it a spin, wiggle it around. Uh, I guess if it was flopping around in there really bad, that's not a good sign. With these being used, I didn't have to change out the the specialty flanges and banjo bolts that the original owner left them on there. Now, ECS makes a kit a turbo install kit that comes with all these crush washers so when you put this back together studs this one's missing all the studs one thing it does not have are the o-rings for the the housing so i'll be replacing those i had some of these on hand so i'll replace those setting the wastegates it just depends on how much boost you're going to run i'll probably set these at eight pounds i think oem they're six to seven psi is what they set them at some people set them at 10, some go higher than that. It just, there's a calculator online that'll tell you what to set them at depending on what boost you're gonna run. I have a array of little tools here. It's not the most professional, but it does the job. This is the gauge I'm gonna be looking at. This is actually for a shock pump. But this is the gauge I'll look at. And what I'm looking at is the cracking pressure of this wastegate. Once this starts to move, that's the cracking pressure. So let's see what it's at. It just started to move, so it's at 7 PSI. I actually might leave that. Let's go check the other one. Again, we're looking for this to move. So it did it right at 7 as well. So these wastegates, the, the cracking pressure is set at 7 PSI. I'm going to go ahead and leave them at that. I'm not going to mess with it. Again, I'll just go through these turbos real quick to make sure everything looks okay. I can't vouch for if the bearings are or or everything's balanced correctly i you know the turbo shops have a special machine that they pull these apart and spin those these turbines up to you know 200,000 rpm and they ch check the balance on them uh, it's kind of hard to do that just spinning it by hand I'll go over these turbos go through them make sure everything looks okay and then we'll go ahead and install them one thing i forgot to mention when doing the waste gates is if you need to set this to the correct, let's say it's 7 PSI for the cracking, you have these two 10 millimeter nuts. And what I usually do is I'll loosen these, pump this up to 7 PSI, tighten these down, and then test it. And hopefully the cracking pressure is at 7. You, you might need to adjust it you know, back or, and forth or loosen a little bit uh, to get that 7 PSI. So to adjust it, that's how I would do it. I'd loosen this and then... Uh, pump this up to 7 PSI, tighten everything down, and then test it. Since this was already at 7, I'm not going to mess with it. Just save some time. Don't forget to get new DOS manifold bolts. Old ones, new ones. Looking at the ECS kit again, I do not see them in here. Uh, so make sure you get these and order them. Uh, not sure why they're not in here. It should be as these are only one-time use bolts. First step I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, loosely put this turbo on. Meaning I'm gonna use these three turbo to manifold bolts. Also, don't forget your crush metal gasket. There's kind of a flat side. I usually just put that face down. Now, if you want, you could go ahead and get this silicone hose stuck in here. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take this hard metal pipe off later on. I have the turbo loosely installed just with the three bolts here and uh, let's go ahead and get the rest of it put together the banjo bolts uh, get everything tied in on the back side of the turbo this is the passenger side for the oil line there's a 10 millimeter that needs to go in there this banjo bolt 
Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the, that stuff. It's flywheel is not installed right now. Makes it really easy to, to put these turbos on without a flywheel on it. Uh, so if you're gonna do a, a clutch job as well and the, and the flywheel is gone, install the turbos first, then install the flywheel. Don't forget when you're installing to uh, make sure the old crush washers are off. New one. I'm just sticking this on here for right now because I'm going to do this oil line first. Loosely put this on. Part of the problem was the turbo was hanging too low for this oil line. I didn't fully tighten it down. I won't do that until, until I get this 10 millimeter bolt in there. That 10 millimeter uh, bolt is in there. So I'll go ahead and tighten this up. Next, we'll go ahead and take care of this banjo bolt. One, quash, one crush washer goes on the top and goes underneath. The real challenge on these is to get them started in the threads. Sorry if it's hard to see or show you, uh, it's kind of a tight space that's in there. So let's go ahead and try to turn this by finger as much as possible and then I will use a wrench. I have a specialty wrench that I made. Now you want to get these bolts fairly tight so they don't leak. Uh, really suck if it starts leaking coolant when it's in the car. Uh, and the only time you really know is when the, the coolant system is pressurized. So make sure you get these fairly tight. Don't do them too tight. I've seen people actually break these banjo bolts, but uh, it does need to be tight. Like don't put a breaker bar on here and, you know, make it tighter, but just as tight as you can do it with the wrench. Here's the other banjo that goes right there. Don't forget to uh, take the crush washer off. That's the old one. Now on this one, it has another 10 millimeter bolt that goes right up in here. So after struggling with it, I finally got it going, the banjo bolt in there. Um, let's go ahead and try to get this piece in with this 10 mil. I don't want to tighten everything down on this banjo and then not be able to get this 10 millimeter bolt in. So that's started, the 10 mil. Let's go ahead and get this in. Again, you gotta make sure it's in there pretty tight. There. Let's go ahead and tighten this one down. So let's do this vacuum line. It's a 13 millimeter banjo. You gotta be real careful I see a lot of people break these as well. Uh, it doesn't take much to break this 13 mil banjo. Here's that 13 mil banjo. Uh, again, remove the old crush washer. Again, these don't make them super tight because you could break these banjos. Next we have the wastegate line to put on. They usually come with the single use Odeker clamp, the one time use that you gotta cut off. Don't go and buy a cheap clamp from like, I don't know, an auto parts store. Uh, most of those are cheap and they'll actually ruin the wastegate line and rip it and shred the darn thing and then you have to get in there when the motor's in the car and try to fix it and it's kind of a pain. 
So make sure you buy a quality piece. This one, if you look at it, you know, it grips it all the way around nicely. It shouldn't ruin the, the wastegate line. Now this doesn't have to go on super tight, I mean like really tight, super tight, just we want it on there so it can't come off, that should do it. And then we can go ahead and put this shield back on. Pretty much all the stuff's done for this turbo, we gotta put the inlet pipe on, uh, we gotta put this piece on and tighten it down. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually put this silicone hose on before I tighten those down and we still have to do the oil return line. I'm going to go ahead and put this silicone hose on here. Now, if you guys know me, I prefer to use the OEM hoses. Uh, I've never liked the aftermarket ones. They, they never fit correctly. Uh, but since his hoses were pretty trashed, uh, I'll give him a pass on it. But make sure you buy good hoses from a reputable company like these are Samco hoses. Uh, don't get the eBay ones. I've never found those to fit right and I usually just toss them like take this pipe out I'm going to go ahead and take off these two five millimeter uh, hex bolts Oops. now I want to do this while the turbo is loose because of this starter as well it, this is such a close fit that if you try to do this when everything's tightened up uh, you'll never get it in there so let's do it while it's still loose. Before I tighten this up, I'm gonna go ahead and put these bolts back in. Okay, on the oil return line. New gasket, the five millimeter hex bolt. And you torque it down to 10 Newton meters. Go ahead and double check them. oil return lines in. Next, let's go ahead and do these uh, eight millimeter uh, exhaust manifold to turbo bolts. Now what's funny on these is the book only calls for uh, 20 newton meters of torque to torque those down. So let's go ahead and torque them down. Remember, these are brand new bolts. Again, I always go back and check because, you know, that crush washer. There you go. So, you know, you don't just torque it down and then not go back to it because with the, the crush gasket in there, you just got to keep going around until that gasket's totally crushed and then uh, these are set at 20 newton meters. Let's go ahead and get the motor mount on. Uh, just remember this little nub needs to go into the subframe bracket support or the motor mount bracket. So what's going to happen is later on, I'm going to have to twist this a little bit. It's going to be tough, but uh, it's doable because I don't know exactly where it goes. I know it goes somewhere in the front, so I'll mount it like that. Remember what I was saying before how Aftermarket motor mounts don't have the little pieces that stick ups. So I could go ahead and just twist this, hopefully. Now, 
Now this isn't a true RS4 inlet pipe. This is aftermarket. Uh, so hopefully it fits okay. Now this is used, it came with these turbos, so hopefully everything fits correctly. Now I'm not going to tighten this down until I get the rest of the inlet pipe on, along with the amps. Uh, because once you tighten this down, sometimes it's really hard to work on. I already went ahead and put a, a cap on it so nothing gets in here. This might get in the way of the chassis when you're installing it, so just be aware you can't have these sticking over on this side because uh, the chassis is in the way. So having them pushed back a little bit helps, but I can't go too far because I still got to put this vacuum line in. It goes right here off the old part. Um, again, use a quality clamp. Everything's put together. Uh, I just have to do the studs. Um, I'm not going to worry about that until I put everything's buttoned up. Give it a second look. Go over everything. Again, that's why you go through and check everything again. Because sometimes you'll miss something. As I missed that. See, I do not like this. What I'm going to suggest to the client, I'll call him a little bit later, is we'll cut the pipe right here. And we'll use a straight cut silicone hose from here to here. We'll wrap it. Because uh, this is unacceptable right here. I just called the client and him and I are in agreement that this needs to be fixed. This is not good. I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm going to install the turbo on the other side. And then when it's time, I'll do both at the same time. I'll, I'll cut both of these and fit everything and, and have it together and ready to go. So for right now, I'm just going to leave it like this. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and do the driver's side turbo. Don't forget to put the crush gasket in there. Next I'm going to do this banjo bolt. Don't forget on the banjo to take off the, or the banjo bolt to take off this crush washer. Again, the hardest part is just getting these started. We'll use my special 19 millimeter I made. I, you guys saw this on uh, when I took the turbos off. I showed you this tool. Warm up with good measure. Now on this inside banjo, there's a, a 10 millimeter bolt that goes over right in here. This banjo started, and then I'll put that 10 in. Again, don't forget to take the crush washer off. Just be aware that uh, ECS Turbo Install Kit, they give you crush washers. Uh, there's, I have four total that do not fit in the banjo. So I had to go through my stash and try to find some new crush washers that I had, which luckily I do. Um, but again, I'm short two crush washers. The four that are in the kit are too small. They do not fit on the banjo bolts. So just an FYI, order a few extra crush washers. Now on some aftermarket turbos, it will not have the mounts for stuff like where I'm putting this 10 mil and on this turbo, same thing. Uh, sometimes they don't have the mounts in the correct places, so you just don't mount them. That's just the way it is. All right, so let's go ahead and do this, this banjo, 13 mm banjo bolt that goes right over here. Um, again, don't forget to take this crush washer off. It's getting repetitive, isn't it? 
It'll be hard to see because I gotta shove my hand in here. It's like needs hand tightening. Again, don't tighten it too tight because these break fairly easily. See the wastegate line? Quality clamp. Double check everything. I'm gonna go ahead and put this this elbow in. Again, I'm gonna loosen this, get the elbow in before I totally tighten this turbo down. When these aftermarket pipes are in here, or these closes, these always get crushed and they look funny because uh, it doesn't fit right and you have to force it in there. This Samco one looks a little better, everything looks good. Uh, I don't see it crushed or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the top first and then come back to this. Remember, when we took the turbos off, the socket and the ratchet didn't fit in here very well. That's gonna be the same problem again over on this far side. This is a normal eight, and I cut it on more than half of it off. So I probably cut that much off so it would fit in there. So you can see how short it is. I cut it. Let's go ahead and tighten this up now. It's not exactly how I want it to fit. It's not perfect, but that's just the way these uh, units are. They're never going to be perfect unless you have a winger. Next, let's do the oil return line. The 10 newton meters. motor mount in and then I'll modify the, the pipe and we will uh, install it. Again I want that little nub on the bottom towards the front of the car. Right. Go ahead and cut off uh, a little bit of the pipe and then I have these silicone hoses what happens is this silicone hose will go over this I will clamp this and then I'll put this over the turbo and clamp that as well I went ahead and put the silicone hose on there I'm gonna put the clamp on there and then I'll put the other piece on I might be able to get the clamp in there a little tighter uh, but it'll be hard to clamp it down I got the clamp pushed up all the way up against there, and you could see it. It fits much nicer. I just had to use the screwdriver instead. But the fit is tight. Before I tighten that down, all this and the 13, let's get this piece in. Tight fit. Let's get this clamp on now. All right, guys, there you go. There's with the silicone hose. Um, everything's up. It is a tight fit right there. I'll get this line in. 
and uh, I'll put some heat shields or something right here like heat tape or something to, to keep that from melting but uh, there you go